it seems that uh, Kariuki cannot hear me. Uh, yes, Kariuki, in your community. Yes, Kariuki, we are waiting for you. In reality, money is not all about notes and coins. Because even uh, in the in the early centuries, there were no notes and coins trade with other commodities or other items. Like maybe from your history uh, classes, you remember that quarry shells, gold, copper, silver was used as uh, money, and in some other commodities. Sirius uh, were also used as a uh, money. So money, as we shall see today, it is not tied to uh, notes and coins. And so when we talk of money, we are talking of anything that has value and is used as a medium of exchange. Note that it is anything that has value and is used as a medium of exchange. Maybe I know at a certain time maybe you've ever told someone i will do some this work for me and i will pay you maybe in kind and when you tell him maybe in kind um you you've paid him maybe maybe by like let's say like uh, for example when you we give some uh rebara some work to do and you tell them i don't have some money but i'll pay you with food i'll pay you with uh, maybe a packet of flour. By so doing, that packet of flour has acted as money because it is through the packet of flour that you've been able to buy the labor services offered by that particular person. So when you talk of money, we are talking of anything that has value, note that, and is used as a medium of exchange. Not all to do with coins and notes. Notes and uh, coins is just part of what we shall we refer to as um, uh, money. So we cannot have our study on money and banking without looking before uh, some uh, steps uh, before the introduction of money. Before money was introduced, there was a system through which uh, people used to trade. And this system is referred to as the butter trade. So when you talk of a butter trade, we talk of a system through which people exchange goods, commodity for commodities, or services for services. You, there is no medium of exchange. There is no constant medium of exchange. So like, for example, you, need, you are in need of a, pack, a bag of maize and someone else has a sheep. You exchange a bag of maize with, a sh with sheep. So when we talk of that, that's when you talk of um, money as a medium of exchange. Money as a medium of exchange. So that's when we talk of a um, uh, butter trade. So um, when you talk of a uh, butter trade, uh, uh, say this is when you are exchanging goods for commodities and uh, in this case there is nothing that is used as a constant uh, exchange uh, factor like for now you know that uh, if I need to buy something I'll just need some notes some coins some credit uh, a credit card or even an m -Pesa because there's now various forms of uh, uh, money so and uh, from that i'll be able to buy what i want and that is when we talk of um uh, money so um let's look at uh, this butter trade uh, and we say that with this butter trade we say that um it is uh, uh it's where we are exchanging goods for other goods huh? and uh it has its disadvantages and uh, advantages so, and before we look at uh, <coughs> uh, this, it's this disadvantage, let's look at uh, the advantages or the the uh, the positive part of the butter trade. Number one, it is simple. It is simple uh, to do trade during butter trade. Yes, you know, like for example, 
when you talk of a butter tribe, you're just taking a commodity and exchanging it with another commodity. There is no need of valuing that commodity. It's just an agreement. You have to agree. And you have to look for someone who has a need of what you are selling. And once that one is okay, it's uh, achieved, you will sell the commodity. That's one of it. It's very easy to do trade using the butter trade. The other one is that uh, it is not affected by inflation. Uh, you know that money usually loses value. Like for example, if I gave you a thousand shillings when uh, you are in you are in school, that is a uh, high school or even primary school, that one thousand could buy more than the one thousand that I've that I that, that that I can give you today. What causes such uh, uh, changes? This is because of what we are talking of inflation. Inflation is loss of value of uh, uh, of money. Like uh, the, 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 the example that I've given you, a thousand today is more valuable than a thousand two years to come, than a thousand a year to come. And that one is measured by the ability of money to buy goods and services. If a thousand of today can be able to buy, let's say, uh, 10 packets of unga, tomorrow it might not be able to buy 10 packets of unga. It may be able maybe to buy, let's say, seven packets of unga. By so doing, we say that uh, the money has been affected by inflation. But when it comes to butter trade, it is not affected by any uh, butter trade. Uh, sorry, any inflation. Now, the, the advantage number three is that uh, there is no need of having exchange rates for people doing business across different countries. You know, uh, each country has its own currency. Like, for example, if when you come to Kenya, we have the Kenya shillings. If you go to India, you have the Indian rupee. If you go to European Union, you'll find the euro. If you go to United States of America, you'll get the uh, the US dollar. The, the, and the examples are numerous. So what usually happens if, for example, I am selling something to someone in India, and uh, I have quoted it in Kenya shillings. For example, I want to sell my phone uh, for, let's say, 10,000 Kenya shillings. For an Indian to buy it, he or she will have to convert first the Indian rupees that he or she has into Kenyan shillings. But with the butter trade, there is no need of converting that Indian, that uh, commodity that you are changing for another commodity. So as I said, that, uh, that's one of, that's uh, some of the advantages of uh, butter trade. So let's look at the disadvantage of uh, butter trade. Uh, unfortunately, for butter trade, it has so many disadvantages than advantages. And one of it is that uh, there is lack of uh, uh, there is lack of double coincidence. For butter trade to be successful, uh, the people doing trade must have what we call double coincidence. What is double coincidence? A double coincidence is, for example, I have gone to the market and I'm in need of a recipe, a bag of beans. And uh, the person whom, who, who wants a bag of beans needs a recipe, what I have. Let's say I have gone to the market with a sheep and I am in need of a bag of uh, beans. So uh, if I go to the market and I find someone with a bag of beans and also needs a sheep, that's when we talk of there is double coincidence. Someone has what I want and I have what he or she 
once. That's when you talk of a double coincidence. But in barter trade, it is usually difficult because, as we said, human wants vary from one person to another. Maybe I'll go to the market and find someone with a bag of beans, but he is not in need of a ship. He's in need of a resi, a bag of maize. There is no double coincidence. I might go to the market and uh, I find someone with, let's say, um, a, a, let's say a, a, a calf and is in need of sheep. So in this, in this particular case, uh, there would be no double coincidence. And that's, that's one of the biggest challenge when it comes to uh, butter trade. The other one is that um, it is uh, possible to confuse the use of value and exchange value of goods and services in, but, in a butter economy. Very, very, very true. Like, for example, when you go to a market, a butter market or a butter economy, there is nothing that uh, uh, measures or compares the worth of commodities. Like, for example, they have gone to the market with uh, a go a sheep. How much is that sheep worth? And there is no money. So there, there is lack of, there is a lot of that confusion. Maybe someone, someone will come to the market and say, a sheep is worth a bag of maize. Another one will say it's equivalent to a bag of beans. So in that particular case, there is that confusion when it comes to the varying of another commodity. The other thing is uh, indivisibility of large items. Uh, for example, um, if a cow, if in a butter trade, a cow is worth two bags of, let's say, wheat, and someone comes to the market and is in need of, uh, let's say, bags of uh, one bag of wheat, and he has a cow. You see, one cow is equivalent to two bags of wheat. And someone has come to the market with one bag of wheat. And I need to exchange my cow. I cannot cut a, a cow into two bits and it remains alive. Or uh, in that particular case, that one is will be a challenge. How shall we trade with this particular other person? And he only have one bag of wheat, which he wants to exchange for a cow. So in that particular case, there will be a challenge because you cannot cut a cow into two and it remain alive. So that's when you talk of indivisibility of a large um, item. Um, there is another thing is that uh, it wastes a lot of time. This is because of uh, uh, the, 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 the problem of uh, one, you don't have, you, it, is, it is hard to find someone who has the same interest. Like for example, when I talked of the double coincidence, it is hard to find someone who is in need of, uh, let's say, uh, a, a, a kettle and, uh, and, and uh, he has wheat, which you want. So because of that, one will waste a lot of time. And then when you also find someone who has the same double coincidence, uh, it is, it, you also take a lot of time trying to bargain for these particular products or for these particular commodities. So that's when we talk of uh, such. So it is time wasted. We, we, wasting, huh? So there is a lot of time which will be wasted uh, as a result of uh, 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 doing this particular uh, trade or taking part in uh, the butter trade. Uh, the other one is that when exchange takes place over time in an economy, it is necessary to store goods for future exchange. If such goods are perishable by nature, the system will break down. Yes, 
uh, imagine people who milk cow and uh, they have a lot of milk and they only sell milk to the market and uh, maybe there is a lot there is increased supply of base milk in the market and uh, you know uh, at times maybe it's, it's hard to preserve milk so that milk cannot be stored for long maybe it can it can be traded upon in a in in a maybe after after maybe the supply of milk has gone down so for perishable commodities uh, it is hard to do trade because of the fact that uh, they are likely to go bad very fast so and because of that because of the perishability of these particular commodities these com these commodities will make uh, the butter economy to collapse as a result of uh, uh, perishability of commodities. All commodities uh, uh, have been that particular feature of them going bad very, very fast. Um, mm -hmm. uh, another disadvantage of this particular um, uh, economy or butter trade is that uh, the development of uh, industrial uh, economy usually depends on division of labor and specialization and allocation of resources on basis of choices and uh, preferences, which might not be achieved in a, a butter trade. Yes, when, you, when economies develop, one of the things that uh, makes the economies to develop is what we call the division of labor and specialization as well as equitable distribution of uh, resources based on choices and preferences. And uh, because people have different choices and they have uh, diff all, uh, different preferences, this may not be fair. And unlike in the money economy, you know, even if you have different choices, you might be having a way through which you can um, uh, maybe uh, maybe what you can say you can equate what those, uh, those choices uh, to uh, maybe to a common value but when it comes to um, when it comes to um, butter trade it is hard to do so so that's why I say that uh, because of that particular case and uh, the, the butter economy, may not uh, lead to economic development. So because of this, that those are disadvantages and uh, so, others, so many others, uh, uh, that's why uh, the money was developed. That's why we have a money economy. So let's first of all go, go have a brief uh, history of development of money. Let's have a very deep, uh, brief um, history of uh, development de uh, of uh, the development of money, and I've just given you just few uh, disadvantages. Uh, you know, even there are others like if, even that uh, that such as uh, the, such that um, uh, such uh, such as uh, maybe uh, commodities being heavy to carry around. You can imagine someone going to Mombasa with a bag of maize and he or she is in need of, uh, let's say, coconut, uh, coconuts from the coast. The, the bag one, the bag of maize will be very heavy. Also, the coconuts will also be very heavy. So it will be very tiresome. And like in a money economy, whereby maybe you just need money, and then you go with the money, then you, that's when you return with your uh, commodities. So uh, that's, that's, those are some of the disadvantages. There are several disadvantages that led to uh, development of money in uh, an economy. So as we have said, I'll just briefly take you uh, tell you what happened. Um, as you said, because of those particular commodity, uh, the, the, sorry, because of those uh, particular disadvantages, 
um, individuals uh, thought of coming up with a, com a, an item that would, uh, ha would be acceptable as a medium of uh, exchange. And uh, this led to development of what we call commodity money. Because of the disadvantages, the, the people started looking for something that will equate the value of uh, uh, commodities. And uh, when people came with the commodity money, they chose things like uh, corn, things like tobacco, things like salt, things like crop to be used as money. Such that when you want to buy to sell to, to when you, when you want to sell somebody something in the market, someone could give you either corn, either salt or tobacco or even crowds uh, to uh, to start in for money, which was uh, accepted by players in an economy. And um, with time, uh, they, uh, uh, because also you can see commodity money is also hard, is also heavy. Because like, for example, let's say you exchange a cow for 20 kgs of salt. It is, it, you, and you, you are, we know those particular time, the transport uh, was not well, uh, was not good as we, we have it now. So you can imagine walking from maybe Mombasa to Nairobi with a uh, 20 kg of salt. And when you want to buy some more commodities, maybe from Mombasa, you will go back with your 20 kg of salt. It was uh, hard. So this one did not solve some of the challenges. And therefore, there was uh, they developed uh, the money into uh, what you call metallic money. This is where some precious metals such as uh, silver, such as copper and gold, were now used in, in, instead of now the commodity money, they were adopted as uh, money. And uh, this was, was better because one, uh, <clears throat> the metals were portable, they were easily recognizable, and they were scarce and indestructible. So this man, this pre, this metallic money, you could easily recognize it. You could easily recognize this is a 10 kg of gold, 10 kg of uh, let's say silver, copper, and uh, because uh, if they are not that heavy, you could carry them because a piece had a, a larger value. You could carry it from uh, place to place. So and this is where. Uh, now the 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 coin the no, the coins started being uh, developed, and uh, people started from uh, started now minting money from the precious um, metals, and uh, they started making what we call uh, coins, what we know as uh, coins. Uh, the the money developed and. Uh, uh, then the, uh, at some times, paper money was uh, given, uh, was uh, brought in into uh, into maybe into trade. Uh, this the and this is uh, this is this was as a result of a uh, uh, high demand of uh, what you call the metallic money. We said one. Uh, money, uh, the, 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 the metal was uh, uh, precious and it was scarce. Because of the scarcity of this particular metallic money, um, the mines or the cores where the metallic money could be gotten from started depleting. And therefore, uh, this particular, the people who could mine these particular metals started thinking of an alternative. And that's why they came up with what we refer to as paper money. And this is what we, we refer to currently to uh, the notes, the current notes. Um, the paper money and the, and, uh, the, the metallic money has been developed with time and uh, um, 
currently that the, 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 the world is like is uh, moving to now what you call the digital money. When you talk of the digital money, maybe you've ever heard of uh, cryptocurrencies such as uh, Bitcoin, you've ever heard of uh, the Ruru coins. These are now um, form of money that you know it's not, it's, you, you cannot find it, you cannot touch it physically because for all the, uh, the, the previous forms of money, they were tangible. You could touch them, you could feel them, you could have them. But because of the um, one diversity in terms of uh, trade and also globalization, presence of uh, exchange rates, now the the the, uh, uh, the, the, the researchers have uh, developed what uh, a common currency that can be used everywhere in the world. And that's when you talk of the cryptocurrency. We also have some other form of uh, money like fiat money that is uh, money backed by maybe uh, what we refer to as uh, bonds and others. Uh, we also have the electronic money like you know you can now uh, transact electronically, you exchange money electronically, but for electronic money it must be uh, backed by the by the what we the, the normal money you saw what we have the plastic money this is when you talk of the cards but also also them they have to be backed by the uh, the the currencies eh? the common currencies so that is a small history of how money came into being so uh, this money for anything to be referred to as uh, money or anything to be accepted as money, it must uh, have some characteristics or it must possess some characteristics. So I want us to look at uh, the characteristic of money. So what do what makes money to be called money? What is the characteristics of money? Number one is acceptability. For anything to be found or to be used for a service, it must be acceptable uh, to those people using it as a form of trade. Like, for example, uh, if I come, if, if, if you have a shop and I come to your shop with some uh, Indian rupees, you might accept them if you understand them or you might reject them but there is there is something that i'm sure that you won't reject if i come to your shop with the kenyan uh, legal tender because the coins and notes are just referred to with a simple common term that is a legal tender so if i come with the kenyan legal tender that is coins and notes you will accept them so that's when talk over acceptability. That's one of the characteristics. For anything to be referred to as money, it must be acceptable. Number two, it is uh, portability. And so when you talk of uh, portability, uh, this is uh, the ability uh, to carry money allowed. So for any item to qualify as money, it should be able to be carried around uh, or it should be portable it should be easily portable it should be uh, convenient uh, or uh, it should, uh, yes to carry around doesn't talk of the portability another thing is scarcity yes you remember we talked of uh, supply demand and supply and we remember we say that when uh, the, the, the supply of commodity is scarce, its price tends to increase. You remember that because people will value it more. And whenever it, a commodity is in a large supply, its value goes down. I'll give you a good example. Remember when the, we have a, a season, like a, a mango season, let's say the orange season, the, the value of the mangoes who are in a, in a, in a, in a chini, or it decreases. But uh, 
a time like now when the mango is mango season is out the mango that you could buy for even five shillings you can only buy it maybe with 30 shillings 40 shillings because it is scarce the same case with money money should be scarce and the reason as to why it should be scarce it's for it to have value that's why money haikuanga ipetikanangi vivi na kuipata ni vigumu because if money would be uh, common to anybody like soil it wouldn't be having any value imagine having if uh, having soil as money it would be, there would be no motivation because you just be uh, bowing down and uh, scooping some uh, soil and then you use it to buy anything even to that particular person whom you are taking that soil wouldn't have it wouldn't uh, attach any soil it wouldn't attach any value to that particular money because it is it is in plenty so that's when you talk of uh, it should be scarce um the other one is that uh, the other characteristic is divisibility when you talk of divisibility is that uh, money should be uh, able to be divided into small units uh, that can be used for uh, exchange of items of low value yes when you talk of the divisibility this is when you talk of uh, ability to divide money into smaller units like for example when you talk of the kenyan legal tether the highest denomination that we have for a note is 1000 the lowest denomination that we have currently it's one shillings and we have divided the currency from 1000 to 500 from 500 to 200 200 100 uh, to 50 20 10 5 and 1 bob that's when talk of the divisibility of money like for example if i want to buy a tomato there's no need of i using a thousand if i have a low, money of a lower currency i'll just need 20 shillings or 50 shillings and i'll buy the tomatoes so that's when talk of the divisibility of currency it should be capable of being divided into smaller unit the other one is homogeneity homogeneity so this is when you talk of money should be uniform money should be uniform um if i have 20 shillings and you have 20 shillings and we compare the two in terms of the physical appearance be it the color be it the lightings that are there they are similar in all aspects doesn't talk of homogeneity anything that is used as money should be similar in all aspect even if i have a 1000 note if we even try to measure the length and the breadth of this particular money it will be the same so that doesn't talk of it the color is the same so that doesn't talk of the homogeneity uh the other one is uh cognizability cognizability um money should be easily recognized like for example if i have a thousand shillings note and i hide where the currency the value of the currency is written by virtue of uh, just showing you any the color and uh maybe any part of that uh, of that particular one thousand having seen an, a thousand earlier you will easily recognize it and just say this is one thousand the same case with other currency if i have the 20 shillings coin and i just lift it up and i ask you what is this and maybe you are uh, you can't see the, the the value of that particular coin someone who has ever seen a 20 bob earlier will just recognize it and just say this is a just a 20 shillings coin and that's when talk of uh, cognizability should be uh, uh, recognized with uh, ease doesn't talk of that so those are some of the uh, of the characteristics of uh, money plus um, others i i don't uh, tie you to the ones that i've given so you can uh, research for more but i can give those ones as per now let's now look at uh, the functions of money yes because we say that money is anything that has value and is used as a medium of exchange what is the work of money 
pesa hufanya kazi gani so number one is uh, on the functions of money is that money is used as a medium of exchange yes when you talk of money used being used as a medium of exchange we are saying that uh, money is used to facilitate the exchange of goods and services in an economy very true if i want to buy anything today i'll just need money to buy it if i want to sell anything today i will just be given money doesn't talk of it should doesn't talk of uh, uh it is used for uh exchange service purposes that is to buy or to sell goods and services that's when you talk of uh, money as a medium of exchange uh the other function of money is unit of account um you you know when you want to buy anything like a good or a service it will be quoted in form of money like if i want to buy a phone now i would not go there and ask how much uh, bottles of soda is this particular uh, phone worth i would just ask how much money is it worth that's when you talk of unit of account it goods and services are quoted in these particular in monetary terms and the other one is a store of wealth or value uh, um money if sometimes people usually keep money as a uh, as a fund it's money is a convenient way of keeping someone's wealth like for example if i have uh, some cabbages and uh, these cabbages are grown and uh, i want to use this money two years to come i will not i will not keep the cabbages and sell them two years to come they will be lotted by the end of even a month or two but uh, when i sell it and i keep it one in form of uh, money by uh, that would be uh, that, that, that one would be better or i like, can use the money uh, in two years time doesn't talk of money can be used as a store of value or well i can also sell my assets and keep them in form of cash or in, in form of money so that's when you talk of store of wealth or value. So that is when that's when you talk of money as a store of wealth or value. The other one, the other function of money is uh, other deferred payment. Yes. Um, when you borrow from someone, do you have a question? Do you have a question? I can see your mic is on. Dr. Jim, any question? I think that is not a question. So let me mute her so that you can be able to. Yes, I've done so. So um, the other one is standard deferred payment. Uh, you all know that as, at a certain point in life, you usually incur what uh, we refer to as uh, debt. And uh, when you have someone's debt, uh, you usually promise them that you will pay uh these are uh, debts later and you usually pay these debts not by what you had uh, borrowed but you rather you usually pay these particular debts using money a good example it's when you buy let's say um unga you you have a, a neighbor who has a shop and uh, you want a packet of unga and um you cannot uh 
you 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 cannot buy this particular <coughs> you cannot pay for the unga now but you know uh, by maybe tomorrow or last, let's say two weeks time you will uh, have the money to pay for this packet of when that is the case, uh, get the money, uh, go and pay for um. You don't go with another packet of unga to pay this particular shikima. So when you talk of a money medium through which you pay debt, uh, you when you 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 just you usually take the packet of unga and then you pay for the packet of unga using the money. That's when you talk of the standard deferred payment that money is used to in settling of debts and i've given that example of a person who buys a packet of unga who, uh, on credit and then um uh they pay later that's when you talk of the standard deferred payment okay uh then that is it when it comes to the functions of money and uh, let's look at now the demand and supply of money just like any other commodity money has its demand and it has its supply just like a packet of unga just like anything that we look we've looked at in economics money is taken like any other commodity it has its demand and it has its uh, supply. So let's look at uh, the demand for money. So when we talk of the demand for money, we are talking of uh, the desire to have uh, money or to hold liquid money. I know, and uh, this desire to hold uh, liquid money uh, may vary from one person to another. So when you talk of uh, this desire to hold money, it, it is usually, and we are talking of now the liquid money, because money is one of the assets that is very liquid. And when you talk of liquid assets, it means that you can, it is convertible into, into cash. You can buy with it, uh, or you can use it the way it is. And like when I have a motor car, motor car is an asset, but it's not as liquid as money. Because if I want maybe to use my car, in, uh, maybe in order maybe to buy a piece of land, I'll need it to convert it into money. Then after converting it into money, I will use it to buy uh, the money that I've gotten. I'll use to buy maybe goods and services that's when you talk of um the demand for money that is when you talk of desire to have money in its uh in, in its liquid form uh this desire to hold money is determined by three motives of money of holding money there are three motives which uh, make someone to have to hold money or to have money and uh, I will be looking at the three motives. First of these, uh, uh, one of these motives is called the transactionally motive. When we talk of the transactionally motive, this is where people hold money in order. People hold money in order to use it for daily transactions or for transactionally purposes. Like, for example, I have 10,000 so that, that I will use to buy something. I have 20 shillings that I will buy, let's say, credit or airtime. I have 100 shillings that I will buy vegetables. That is keeping money for transactionally motive. Number two is what we call a precautionary motive precautionary motive 
when we hold money for precautionary motive we keep money so that we can use it in case of emergency nile sasa in the layman man tunasemanga we have kept money ya usiku mbaya in quotes hiyo nile sasa in case um toto agojeke maybe in case a uh, less gas ishe that is when you talk of uh, precautionary motive you've kept it for precautionary purposes such that in case an in an emergency happens unplanned activity happens i will use the money as we talk of keeping money for precautionary purposes uh the last one because there are three only three motives the last one is for speculative motion purposes or uh, speculative motive when talk of uh, for speculative uh, motive this is when you keep money such that uh, uh such that uh, when uh, an investment opportunity comes you will use that money to invest like uh for example you keep money such that uh, when maybe a plot is being sold somewhere you can use that money to buy that plot when shares are being sold in an ipo you can use that money to buy shares in a company that's when we talk of um, money kept for uh, speculative motive so that is all that we can oh let's look at uh, the supply sorry the supply side the supply side of money uh when talk of now supply of money we say that demand for money is a desire to hold money in liquid form what about the supply uh the supply of uh, money this is now the amount of money in circulation the amount of money in circulation yes uh when there is a lot of money in circulation we say that the supply is more when there is less money in circulation we say that the supply is less so that's when we talk of the money supply and uh for money supply it is usually determined by three factors just like uh, uh the demand and one of it is uh the velocity of money or to, of sorry not of the money of the transaction when we talk of the velocity of a transaction we are talking of how the transaction the speed or, or with which the transaction takes place in an economy how uh how money how, which we which is this, what is the speed with which money circulate in an economy that's when we talk of the velocity with which money circulate in an economy another thing that usually determine the money supply is what we refer to as a uh, uh, the quantity the quantity of money that has been uh, released by the central bank yes when we talk of the quantity of money sometimes the cbk may may uh, mint or may uh, release a lot of notes and coins in the circulation so meaning that the quantity will increase and therefore the money that will be circulating uh, will also increase and then the last one is what we call the transactions the number of transactions one thing that we note with money there is what we call uh, uh, the multiplier effect um if i if you pay me let's say um with 10000 today and i hide the 10000 rese uh in my house and uh, i don't use the money for the uh, purposes i will have uh, prevent the money to circulate but if you pay me the 10000 i use the 10000 to buy an item then the person to whom i have bought the money the item from uses the money to buy another thing and the money now starts flowing it means that maybe 
Many people will touch that particular money. You see, money is the trans, the more the circulation. On, and then thus, the higher the supply. So note, the money supply is determined by three factors. One is the velocity through which a money circulates with the number of transactions and what we call the quantity of money that has been released in an economy. Before we go to the banking part, I want to give you a poll. There is a poll that I've given. I will uh, I want to see how I mean how whether we are together. So answer that poll. I will want it to answer that poll. Then after that we shall uh, have uh, we shall continue. is money stored in those particular institutions. So that's why money and banking cannot be uh, separated. So, uh, uh, let's look at banking. And we shall, the banking system. And uh, one thing that you shall see is that uh, the banking system it consists of uh, institutions which determine the supply of money and uh, this one is com uh, composed of uh, two major sectors the first sector is what we call the commercial banks sector and we also have another part of the banking system, and that is uh, the central bank. So when you'll be talking of um, the uh, the banking system, will be concentrating more on those two: the commercial banks and uh, the central bank. Then, uh, in addition to the two, there is what we call the non-banking financial institutions. Apart from the central bank, apart from the commercial banks, there are other institutions that deals with issues to do with money. And these institutions that uh, deal with the issues to do with money are institutions such as circles, insurance firms, uh, others like uh, housing cooperatives and others. So that's that's when you'll be talking of the banking system. Let's now uh, focus on the first one, which is the central bank. When you talk of the central bank, uh, it is the largest bank in an economy. This is the bank that uh, is the highest. Like if you go to Kenya, we have you, you, you have the Central Bank of Kenya. This is the bank that controls the circulation of money. Or in a, an economical term, it is a, it, it controls the the supply of money. When whether money is more or less, it is the central bank that uh, usually controls uh, such. So the central bank will say that uh, it's the institution that controls the circulation of money or the supply of money in an economy. So that is when you talk of uh, the central bank. Um, so that is the central bank. Let's look at the functions of the central bank. Number one function of the central bank is what we call it's uh, the government banker. All the government, uh, all the government uh, institutions, all departments must have an account with the central bank. So, uh, if you think of a department of the government, like for example. The, the education departments, you can talk of the health department of the government, 
uh, they usually have an account with the central bank. That's when you talk of it is the government's banker. That is every institution, every department of the government must have an account with the central bank. Number two, function of the central bank is the banker's bank. Uh, we have the, co the the commercial banks, banks like Equity Bank, Cooperative, Jamie Bora Bank. We have which is the other one, the Prime Bank, the First Community Bank, Chase Bank, and others. Those ones we refer to them as commercial banks. And for these commercial banks to be allowed to operate in a country they must deposit some of their funds with the central bank so it is a banker's bank so that, that is a these other banks must uh, have an account with the central bank now the other one is that um, issue of notes and coins yes it is the work of the central bank to issue notes and coins in a country like for example I, you, I know you might be having any note and on the face of that particular note it is written bank cool ya kenya ama the central bank of kenya it means that it is the central bank of kenya that has issued that note but note here it is not that the central bank makes the notes and the coins. It issues them. Inazi peana, inasaculate. But the work to mint cash, it is still under the central bank, but is done by another institution. So that is it. The other one is the letter of last resort. Yes, when commercial banks are in need of cash they uh, and they cannot find anybody to give them some cash they usually go to the central bank and that's in talk of it is the letter of last resort when the commercial bank do not have any other option they go to the bank the central bank to get some cash uh -huh. The other one is that uh, managing the national debt. The central bank is usually responsible of selling government securities or what we call the treasury bills. You've ever heard of uh, government inviting people to come and buy what we call the, uh, the treasury bills, treasury boards, and in so doing, uh, the, 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 the central bank uh, is the one which is given that particular responsibility. It borrows from the people. And when they have matured, the same, same central bank has the responsibility to pay back the uh, people who had invested in this particular uh, boards and bills. This, uh, also, apart from the bonds and the bills, the government usually borrows locally and internationally. When the government borrows uh, locally, it may borrow from uh, banks, it may borrow from the citizens through the issue of uh, treasury bills and bonds. And when it does so, it is the responsibility of a central bank to ensure that that money is paid in, on, in good time and it has been paid so as to, have, to avoid maybe penalties and uh, other things. So let me talk of uh, managing national debt. The other one is supervision of uh, uh, commercial banks. Yes, the central bank is the one that uh, supervises commercial banks. You have seen sometimes in Kenya, the central bank even punishing some of the commercial banks. The central banks come in with the regulations. That's when we talk of bank, bank uh, commercial bank supervision. It is um, the role of uh, the central bank to supervise this uh, uh, 
uh, the commercial banks. The other one is operating a monetary policy. Uh, when talk of a monetary policy, this is a policy that regulates how money supply is in an economy. And it is the role of the central bank to operate this monetary policy. It is the role of the central bank to ensure that uh, the money in circulation, the money in circulation is it's, it's in a control or it's controlled through monetary policy. So we see that uh, the central bank controls money circulation through these things that we refer to as the monetary policy. It, is, it also sets what we call the bank rates. Yes, the, uh, the central bank usually sets what you call the banking rates. So anybody, any, anybody wishing to borrow from a bank, uh, that interest rates, first, first of one of it comes from uh, what we refer to as uh, the bank uh, rates. So set by the central bank. So that is the function of uh, the central bank. And let's now go to the commercial banks. And we start by defining what are commercial banks. And we say that uh, a commercial bank is a financial institution that undertakes all kinds of ordinary banking businesses, such as accepting deposits, advancing loans, and uh, is also a member of clearing house. So when you talk of a commercial bank, it is a bank that uh, deals with um, deals with uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the the issue of um, acceptance of deposits uh, and also issuing of loans to cast to customers who want to borrow. All in simple terms, it is a financial institution that does basic banking activities. And this is an exa examples of this. These are several. I had given some. These are banks like the KCB, that is the Kenya Commercial Banks. We have the Prime Bank, we have INM, we have um, a co Cooperative, we have ABSA plus many other banks. In Kenya, they are allowed 45 commercial banks. So, that's when you talk over commercial banks, an institution that will give, uh, will accept your deposit. It will issue loans and also it's a member of clearing, clearing house. Let me first of all talk of what we talk of, a bank being a member of clearing house. Sometimes maybe you've ever seen a check and uh, at times we usually take a check. Like for example, a check from cooperative bank to equity bank, or a check from, um, let's say, uh, Chase Bank to KCB. There comes a time when now the bank takes all the checks that belongs to another bank, to other banks, and the other banks takes the do does the same. They usually compare, they usually try to balance that aspect of trying to balance those, or balancing those checks which have been paid to the bank and other, and other banks, that's when we talk of the clearing houses. So that is it. So let's look at functions of the commercial banks. Number one is um, they provide a safe uh, custody of money and other uh, precious variables. Yes, a, money, a bank usually gives a place where you can keep your money plus any other variables. Yes, if you have some cash, we usually keep it safe in the bank. If uh, you have variables such as a certificate, such as jewelries, you can also take them to the bank. So that's when talk of provision of safe custodies of uh, uh, those uh, precious commodities. That's when talk of it. Number two is a uh, lending money to borrowers. So one thing that you know is that um, bank do not have their own money. 
most of the money that banks have belongs to people who have deposited in these particular banks. And uh, therefore, we say that a bank, commercial bank, is an intermediary between savers and borrowers. So once a person has saved his or her money in a bank, the bank now lends this money to another person and charge them an interest. So as we talk over, that's a function to lend money to people. Uh -huh. The other one is that um, act as agents of a central bank when dealing with foreign exchange. Yes, like for example, if I am in need of a lower than currency or a European Union currency, euros, I can go to any commercial bank and I'll be given the uh, money that I need. That's when you talk of it. Uh -huh. The other one is that uh, they offer ad management advisory services to enterprises. Yes, um, sometimes banks offer consultancy services such as my management cons uh, advisory services. If you maybe need some uh, advice on maybe on how to invest, banks can give you such uh, an advice. The other function is that uh, banks can work, can act, as, can act as guarantees. Sometimes individuals uh, may need uh, more money than, they are, than what their banks can give all from uh, uh, other institutions and they can approach maybe their banks to act as a guarantee uh, you know a guarantor this is a person who offers to pay a loan if you don't if you fail to pay uh, if you are unable to pay it uh, or when time is due so banks can also step in or act as a guarantors the other one is that uh, banks can act as trustees. When we talk of trustees, these are people who are given authority to manage other person's uh, assets. And uh, uh, when this one happens, uh, when banks act as a, a, a trustees, they will manage the property on behalf of another person. Doesn't talk of the act as trustees in, when it comes to property. So that is it when it comes to uh, the functions of the commercial banks. Yes. Well, I think that is okay. I want. Uh, I will uh, I will uh, stop at that when uh, in our next session we shall still look at the same same topic because it's white and we shall look at uh, the monetary policy and credit creation because I want that one to be understood but I've seen some questions from those particular two topics and I think it is better